I think these clubs are the best clubs you can buy pound for pound. However, there is a catch. Okay, the story of this brand starts last year with me. Last year, I went online and bought a set from Styx, S-T-I-X. You buy them online, you can put in a few different options of custom fitting, very limited, and in a few weeks, they get delivered to your door. Now, last year, I bought 12 golf clubs. They came in a tube box for about 600 pounds. Now, there was a lot of things I liked about the set. However, there was a number of things that I was disappointed with. First off, even as the clubs came out of the box, out of the 12 golf clubs that I ordered, six of them were damaged and scratched. There was no head covers for the woods or putter. There was no golf bag. There was massive gaps in the wedge makeup from a pitching wedge to a sand wedge, leave massive, huge holes in distances. And also the putter, even though it looked quite nice, felt very weird. The weighting on it was completely not right. However, last year's set did also feature some massive positives. First off, the performance. I mean, overall, they were very, very good. Like, I didn't have much downside for the performance whatsoever. And the driver in particular, in fact, it's what led to the title of last year's video, was phenomenal. I don't GC Quad, it was going a mile. Really impressed with that. So that's last year's set out of the way. We're now going to talk about this year's set, the new set from Styx. And I've got a funny feeling Styx might have listened to the reviews because they've made some changes that I definitely called out on last time. Let's talk about, first off, the club options. You can actually now buy 14 golf clubs, a full set of golf clubs, including more specialised wedges. A gap wedge, a sand wedge, a lob wedge. Brilliant. So once I saw that online, I thought, yeah, we've got to order a new set and let's review them because if they're as good as last year, I'd be really impressed. When they arrived, the first thing I wanted to inspect was the quality of the golf clubs. Because remember last time they were scratched. This time, very, very impressed. Not a single scratch mark on the golf club. They almost double bubble wrapped the heads to make sure there was no marks at all. So big positive there. So as I started to unbox everything, looking through the golf clubs, I also wanted to have a look at the golf bag because this again was new this year. So stand bag, it's gray, black, a few little red features on the zip. And overall, quite nice. Like not my favorite bag in the world, but does a job and actually looks quite cool and does match the set. Happy with that. However, even though last year they had no head covers, this year they've got head covers. Um, I'm not sure if they've just tried to cut some corners with these because the head covers for the woods and the putter were pretty shocking. I mean, they're just... I've got one here. It's just like a, a flimsy oven glove thing. It's not going to protect a golf club very much. And even the putter head cover, as much as it's got a magnet on it, there was a couple of times out on the golf course where it actually fell off the putter. Ah, it's a shame. Not quite got that right yet. So the first thing I wanted to do was test the putter. So again, last year's model, I felt the balance was all wrong. Well, this year I spent a long time on the putting green to get a feel for the putter. There's a slightly thicker grip on it, same black shaft, graphite shaft, and the same head design. But this time, I've got to say, the weight of the putter was much more balanced. It didn't feel odd at all. And again, the performance was really nice. Just even just rolling on the practice putting green, I got some really good rolls on it. So I was, that was a good sign. So then I headed out on the golf course. I just wanted to test every golf club in the bag, from the woods to the irons to the new wedges, which looked amazing. I wanted to give them a proper, proper test. So after playing a couple of holes, I then spent a bit of time properly testing these clubs. I started with wedges first. So again, this time you have a specialist, 52 degree, 56 and 60, and they look superb. In the full black finish with the black shaft, black head, black grip, look incredible. I'm gonna come on to a couple of concerns I've got about the wedge face later in this video. But the performance, I've got to say, there's not many times I've hit a 52 degree this close to the hole on a full shot. As you can see from this array of shots, I was absolutely peppering the pin. And around the green, even the little 56 degree chipping, it was good, like it gave me a level of confidence. And again, as you know, my chipping's not the greatest in the world. 
There's a slight downside on the wedge. They might be something that I feel because I test a lot of wedges from loads of different brands. The feel off the face was firm. It was quite a hard hitting feel off the face. It's something a few might not pick up on, but it was something I definitely noticed. Okay, then moving into irons. Now this year's version looked very similar to last year's, to be honest. Black head, black shaft, black grip, and just a very simple orange line on the bottom groove. The only thing I'm picking up on looks this time, and it's a very silly little thing, and I'm sure people will think, why are you even bothering mentioning this? But it's something I certainly picked up on. The number on the irons is tiny. And also, because it's in that kind of black finish, it's actually somewhat hard to see. It might just be me getting old, having worse eyesight. It might be something that the cool kids love, but for me, it was definitely a bit of a slight downside. It's the only thing, though, I could pick up on the irons, because the performance was very good. Now, these irons are strong lofted, so they'll go a long way, but they feel great. Like, there's nothing really wrong with the performance whatsoever with the irons. All the way from five iron all the way down to pitching wedge felt like they gave me a lot of confidence hitting all different types of shots. So then was the time to unveil the woods from those horrible head covers. I had a four hybrid, a five fairway wood, a three fairway wood, and I'll come onto the driver a little bit later. For me, the performance of the woods were good. I hit some really nice shots into this kind of short par four, and the flight was really good, they feel good. If I've got a critique at all, the face is a little bit closed, they aim a little, tiny bit left, but that is it. Apart from that, really nice shallow face, really good footprint behind the ball, and good, solid flights of the shots. I was actually really happy with the woods. And then, excuse the pun, this kind of teases up for the driver. Now, I actually didn't have my GC quad with me the time I first filmed this video, so I came back the very next day because I thought to myself, if we're gonna test a driver, we've obviously gotta get some data, some numbers. And I was really impressed with last year's driver. Now, in that time frame as well, when I was at home, I thought, you know what? What could be a good test for this Styx driver? Because, again, I talked about the limited fittings. This driver comes in a 10 and a half degree and a stiff shaft. So to compare it against my driver I normally have in the bag that's fully spec for me would be kind of unfair. So I thought, you know what? Let's grab a mainstream driver, something that's nearly 500 pound brand new in the same spec. So I picked up a Callaway Epic Speed Max in 10 and a half degrees in a stiff shaft. I thought it'd be a good test. So I whacked a load with the Callaway, I hit a load with the sticks and this was amazing. I actually didn't expect this result at all. I honestly didn't. The sticks outperformed the Callaway. It really did. Now these numbers aren't the longest I ever hit, obviously, because they weren't in my spec. But head to head, the sticks actually came out on top. It gave me a little bit lower spin rate, and the ball, because of that, was traveling through the air longer. This was carry distances. I was carrying the sticks well into the 270s, where I was really struggling to hit the Callaway in that spec, again, you've got to remember that, over 270 yards. So, so far, so good, right? You're probably thinking to myself, well, you mentioned at the start of the video, there's a catch. You mentioned that there's something wrong. Well, uh, there is, to be honest with you. Now, quickly, before I come on to the catch of these golf clubs, if you want to win them, I'm going to give them away to somebody around the world. All you've got to do is like the video, leave a comment, and also subscribe to the channel. We're getting really close to 2 million subscribers. Let's get there. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do. And I'll be giving this very set of sticks away to a lucky winner. So currently, at the time of filming this video, if you're buying these in the UK, you can currently only get right-handed, stiff graphite, standard length. That's it. Now, lucky for me, and I think this is why the club's definitely worked a little bit better for me. I can use stiff shafted graphite and typically with every brand, I'm standard length. Might not be lucky for a lot of people out there. In fact, I reckon it'll hinder most people because everyone's different heights. Everyone has different swing speeds. Some might prefer a regular shaft or a steel shaft or an extra stiff shaft, whatever it may be. There are big downsides to that. You just can't get them fine tuned to your game. Now, you might think, well, that might suit me, great. But, are you gonna try them? You can't try them before you buy. You can't go to your local pro shop. You can't go and get a proper fitting. You can't go to your local retail shop and test these golf clubs. They're just not available. You have to buy them before you try them. Again, that's a big downside. Because this time, 
Certainly if you're buying these in the UK right now, for the full set, £899. It's a lot of money. For a set that you can't test and you can't try, for a set from a brand that a lot of people won't know anything about, might be some level of trust issues there or whatever it may be, I think this time, I think sticks have gone too expensive. Last time when I bought them at kind of around about £600, they kind of fit in a really nice category. Now I know you get more this time, but I really do think the price has pumped up too much. Because again, for that price, if you've got somebody who is involved in golf, a friend who already plays, they could buy you a ridiculously better set, in my opinion, secondhand with a bit of guidance. Like, you've seen the videos I've done with second-hand golf clubs in the past and what clubs you can pick up for £500. They're not brand new, granted, but the performance is always pretty good. So that's a big downside. I think they've gone too expensive this time. And if you have spent a lot of money and you want these golf clubs to last, uh, I might have some bad news for you. As soon as they come out of the box and they put them in your bag, they look amazing. They do, no question about it. The finish looks incredible. However, I'm not sure how long that's gonna last. Now, there's a line on the website that mentions about this new black finish about it. It's not gonna scratch. Well, I did a little durability test. I grabbed the 60 degree lob wedge and I've not hit it at all yet until I did this test. It was brand new. And I hit 10 shots out of a bunker, just a normal bunker. I saw big wear and tear, certainly on the face. There were some real bad scratch marks straight away. Now granted, that's not gonna affect performance, it's not, it's just aesthetics. But over time, that's gonna annoy people and frustrate people, I know it would me. I mean, it'd be a bit like buying a brand new iPhone, dropping it the first week and having a crack straight down the middle of the screen. You know it's not gonna affect performance of the phone, but it's bloody frustrating. You've spent a lot of money and now the thing, the product, the phone, the golf club is damaged. Oh, that'd be a nightmare. Now going back to that bold statement I started the video with, I think these are the best pound for pound golf clubs you can buy that are brand new. But there are a number of negatives you definitely need to consider. We'll see you next time.